terms of uh, five we did in uh, 2014, Stuart Bailey and myself, it's uh, uh, a fairly small fire in a commercial clothes dryer. Um, it's not, uh, it's not a, wasn't a significant fire. The significant thing why I sort of brought this case study forward was the number <coughs> of systems failures that occurred in what was, uh, what we thought was a pretty well run uh, laundry. So the fire was actually in a uh, nursing home. Uh, so the top uh, floor there is uh, where the dementia patients are, uh, acquiring 24 hour a day uh, care. And down in the bottom there, if you've got the laundry in the kitchens. So the door to the right um, is uh, where the washing room was. And behind the van is the actual drying room. So there are two parts to it, and the kitchens were even further on. <coughs> Um, inside uh, the building is a courtyard. You can see Stuart standing in the uh, doorway at the bottom there. Um, that uh, roller door was closed during the fire and the firefighters opened it to vent the smoke. The smoke then went up through uh, the shade cloth and into the open windows of the dementia unit. So while we're doing this, if you could just uh, think of all the systems failures that you uh, have encountered in regard to those again. So the fire was in a bank of uh, two uh, dryers. You can see that the, the, the fire was in that uh, one with the door open. You can see above the dryer that they're staining on the roof. It wasn't hot enough to actually set off the sprinkler system, but it did set off the uh, smoke uh, alarms and close the, the smoke doors in the units above. Uh, the dryers are hooked up, you can see there's uh, in the uh, bottom they're hooked up to water, to electricity and also to LPG gas. Now we'll just go through uh, just how the operation of it. In the top section there there's a heater and there's an optional fire suppression unit. So all the drives here had the fire suppression unit uh, attached. In the centre you've got the control panel, the, the drum, and down the bottom is the lint filter and the exhaust fan. You can see that there's been a little bit of uh, heat in the, uh, in the top of the lint filter there. The air goes in through the, the top there, over the LPG uh, burners, and uh, down onto the right side of the, uh, of the drum. Now, this is the fire suppression unit. Um, you can see that there's a light here that would come on indicating if there's a water discharge or a failure of the system. Of course, that's facing the, the wall at the back of the uh, unit and you can't see it. Uh, uh, only a very thin person could uh, uh, make their way in between those two drives. Uh, I nearly got stuck. <laughs> The, uh, and of course on the back there is the instructions for how to, uh, what to do when there's a dry fire. Luckily it's repeated in the front. Now, Stuart and I are lucky that we have a technician from the company that maintains the dryers uh, to come and help us uh, go over it. Here we've taken the, uh, the uh, unit from the top of the, of the uh, dryer. You can see that there's the, uh, the spray bar for the deluge system. It's very sorted, isn't it? And when we saw that, we thought maybe, okay, maybe it hasn't worked. Um, and uh, you've got the LPG gas burners and the opening the top of the drum. Um, when we got there, all the clothes had been removed from the dryer, and that was what was uh, left. Um, you can see there's an area of protection, so it's filled with about three quarters of, uh, of the drum was full. Now, the dryer was used to uh, dry, to uh, launder the contents of uh, laundry bags, red laundry bags that were put out of the, the dementia unit. Um, the, because the loads were contaminated, or potentially contaminated, um, they, the laundry staff weren't allowed to sort the bags before they were washed and dried. So they simply emptied the contents into the dryer, threw the bag in, washed it, 
pull the contents out and stuck them back into the dryer. And uh, so the staff also disposed of uh, their examination gloves into the uh, into the loads as well. So we saw. Uh, down the bottom was the lint filter. I mean, you know, we were looking naturally that uh, there could be a problem with lint build up in the burners. Uh, sorry, in the uh, uh, what you, in the uh, around the bearings of the drum. And uh, but when we looked at the the uh, filter in the unit beside it, it looked appeared that they were following the uh, instructions and it cleaned the, the lint filter fairly well. Just up on top of the lint filter is the thermistor that uh, <coughs> monitors the oops, monitors the uh, temperature in the uh, machine. There's one below the drum and also one above the drum. Uh, down in the bottom uh, of the lint, behind the lint filter is the exhaust fan that powers the whole thing. <coughs> And uh, it pulled 1,600 litres of air per second through the uh, um, over the drum, and it's then exhausted up uh, through that vent and into the uh, into the roof above. You can see that the lint filter is actually burnt through in this uh, case. And there's the control panel. Um, closed dryers like this are uh, pretty safe sort of things. They They've got a uh, temperature limiting device um, or mechanism. When you're, you're drawing clothes on uh, or anything on, uh, on the high setting, it limits it to the temperature to 82 degrees. So, you know, the auto ignition temperature of uh, the textiles is somewhere around 240 and above, so it's well below that. And these machines also have thermostats in them. If it goes over 104 degrees, then the machine stop and the, uh, and the, the, the deluge system comes in. You can see the list of things that they were actually drying. In this case, the setting was on high. The bottom one's interesting, mops and rags um, that also go in there. Uh, and this is the uh, instructions for the staff uh, in case of fire. So call the fire department, don't turn off the electric power to the tumbler, don't turn off the water, and don't touch it. So it's just close it and leave it. When we have a look at this, uh, one of the uh, thermostats, uh, that it's hard to see, but the little red button has popped, and so uh, both thermostats had, uh, had actually opened, and uh, so the, the machine should have stopped and the deluge system should have in. Uh, in, the, uh, in the laundry room over on the right hand side there were two uh, buttons that you could turn the power off to the uh, dryers with. So one turned off uh, two dryers and the other turned off the other two. And then there was this red button which switches the power off to the entire building. So this is basically what happens. Um, and the op um, machine's operating quite normally, and suddenly there's an SH error that comes up on the uh, on the, the panel. Now that says uh, it's a short circuit in the thermistor, and uh, uh, this um, this should have uh, had the machine stop uh, stop heating and the uh, the dryer from uh, uh, stop revolving. This had happened a few times uh, in the last couple of weeks. They had an SH error. They just uh, let the machine uh, cool itself down, and the, um, uh, the machine has reset itself, and they could use it again. <coughs> but the operator pressed the stop button, and they left the dryer for 20 minutes or so. They hadn't seen any fire. I keep doing that. They hadn't seen any fire in the drum, so they just uh, let it cool down, and in 20 minutes' time, they opened it, and there was a smell of burning, and they could see smoke coming out of the top of the dryer. So, the, laund the person who was doing the, the drying called the laundry su supervisor, 
and she went over and turned the uh, power off uh, at the wall. They left the uh, door open and um, went to get the, uh, the maintenance supervisor. When he came in, he saw that there was a layer of smoke coming down towards the top of the dryer and uh, he got a dry can extinguisher and um, put it all over the clothes and uh, then evacuated everybody. He, put, he didn't see any water on the floor to indicate whether the suppression system had worked or not. They evacuated the laundry uh, room and then uh, fire and rescue uh, arrived and they went in through the, uh, the washing room spraying a bit of water to cool the gases down. When they got into the drying area they uh, asked that uh, the power be turned off and the electrician who followed them through the uh, smoke across the button. Um, the first responder found that the, there was a fire in the uh, in the, the drum, and he uh, and that there was an extinguisher nearby, but he didn't see any chemical residue in the uh, in the drum. He extend, then extinguished the fire, and then opened the roller door to get rid of the the uh, smoke. And at that stage, the smoke went into the dimension unit above. Firefighters then removed the contents of the dryer into a wheel bin. Now this is a polyethylene cart that uh, was used for laundry and um, they put the contents into that, wheeled it outside, they felt that the contents were hot as they were doing that and sure enough when they got out into the car park it started to smolder again, they tipped it all out and uh, extinguished it. Okay, so our investigation, um, we went through naturally to determine the uh, point of fire origin. Uh, the machine was working pretty well, uh, we could revolve the drum, there was no fire in the machinery at all and we, the sooting and staining decreased with distance away from the drum, the area of greatest damage was in the drum and we also saw that the thermostats top and bottom had open and there was water in the bar of the deluge system. So it appeared that it had activated at some stage. So drum was the area of greatest damage. These are some of the sort of things that we saw in there. The uh, bit over the bottom right there, the melted plastic was possibly a bottle. Um, you can see that there's cleaning sponge mop heads. Underneath the drum, we saw this white uh, plastic coming through the holes of the drum. The only thing I could work out that was in there that was white polystyrene sort of plastic was a whole set of uh, spoons, plastic uh, spoons and cutlery. And so that uh, starts to soften at about 100 uh, to 130 degrees uh, C and the pattern that uh, it's got in it that would suggest that the drum was actually uh, rotating at the time it melted, uh, melted through. You can see the, uh, the mister here, it's got a bit of a pattern from this uh, drop down uh, burning melted plastic. The lid fill has been combusted, but the sorting decreases as you get away from the uh, drum. Here's uh, the contents. It's quite uh, significant. And there's the polyethylene drum, uh, the cart that they used to take it away. Some of the things we found it in there, you can see the mop head, uh, there's uh, stockings, examination gloves, cotton wool. There's a few metal objects that could have had sparks but uh, didn't appear to, uh, to have. So we basically said that the, uh, that the area of origin was in the, the drum itself rather than in the uh, dryer. And to determine the cause was the next job. Um, we were able to uh, see that the LPG burners were working fine, the machine was working fine, 
and so we excluded those as possible causes and we were really left with uh, the other two causes, spontaneous uh, ignition in the load and the ignition of a flammable gas produced by uh, decomposition um, and ignited by the LPG burners. So, in the Hubsch manual, they refer to the possibility of, uh, of ignitions and uh, they had four cautions you can see there. So no, don't put any clean solvents or in it, don't dry plastics or foam rubber or rubber-like materials. Don't put articles soiled with vegetable or cooking oil and uh, machine, uh, don't put in things uh, containing wax or chemicals such as mops or cleaning cloths. <coughs> So there appears to have been three ignitions in the load. One, um, when the machine was operating the first uh, time, the Mr. failed, and it appears that the temperature has gone beyond 82 degrees. There was no flame seen at that time, um, or uh, nor when the door was first opened after 20 minutes. The second occurred after the laundry assistant uh, left uh, door to uh, door open and went to get uh, help from the maintenance supervisor and the third occurred in the, in the car park. So we went uh, to the home uh, to see what uh, he said about spontaneous combustion and uh, you know, to summarise it, that's it. If you remove uh, clothes from, from the, uh, uh, and don't complete the drying cycle, and if the material is uh, above 90 degrees uh, C, then spontaneous combustion uh, can uh, proceed. Um, this Jim Everett, who's a contributor to the NFPA, um, also cautions uh, against uh, putting even small amounts of cleaning products and cleaning rags into uh, the, the drying process, because even if they've been washed, they can still lead to uh, spontaneous combustion. Okay, in our observations of what actually happened, the first thing the laundry uh, worker said she saw an SH error on the, on the uh, control panel, which means the short circuit in the thermistor. That's uh, going to, if the thermistor's not working, then the temperature in the machine can get above 82 degrees, and the internal sprinklers uh, start to operate above 100. Dehan says that if uh, you get uh, every 10 degrees you get above 90, then the, uh, the reaction rate doubles. Now, if you think of those, uh, those plastic uh, spoons melting, may have got up to uh, you know, 120 would be reasonable to, to assume. So it's about four times the reaction rate. So we concluded that uh, yes, uh, the conditions for spontaneous combustion had uh, existed. And we were then went to look at the, uh, the other hypothesis, whether there was flammable liquids or uh, or something in the load that would decompose and give off enough flammable gases to be ignited by the uh, uh, by the LPG uh, uh, burns. There were a couple of objects that uh, may have been in the load that uh, could have been bottles of flammable liquid. Uh, we looked at some of the plastic items that I think uh, appears to be a cup. Uh, the remains of it. You can see the examination gloves and the cotton wool. We uh, think that the uh, uh, polystyrene melts at 204 degrees uh, C, but it softens between 100 and 130. So we think that's the sort of temperature that it got into. Uh, looking at what was actually in the load, that's what we identified in the load itself. But it could have been anything. I don't know if you've had any experience with dementia patients or whatever. 
until my uh, father in law's in a war. He hasn't got dementia, but he's got um, <coughs> he's had TIAs and um, he does suffer from delusion. So that um, my wife went up one day and he was in his bed uh, and he was, a, he was thinking that somebody was going to come in and kill him. And so he'd hidden all these valuables. Right? So uh, people with delusions like that can, are capable and do apparently put almost anything into those red laundry bags. Um, we collected the uh, plastic uh, items that uh, were normally found in the uh, nursing home. Nobody owned up to the fact that uh, there'd be any bottles of flammable liquids or things like that. And uh, we collected them and we went through and uh, torched, uh, heated them up to about 120 degrees. So we just used a single little electric bar radiator and an infrared um, a thermometer to see what had happened. And nothing much happened. The only thing that did happen was that about 90 degrees, the cloth started to give off quite a few fumes. And uh, the uh, and the cup started to melt, but they hadn't ignited, and really they hadn't, didn't appear to have given off uh, much in the way of uh, fumes. What surprised me was that the uh, examination gloves uh, charred at about 120, but really I thought they would have ignited much uh, more readily than that. Apparently, you know, it's reasonably quite safe to, to throw your examination gloves in your dryer if you want it. Uh, we saw that there was a possible thread of a screw cap bottle in the debris. We photographed that, but uh, it disintegrated and couldn't see it. At, uh, point. So, and, um, so, based on uh, what we saw, we couldn't really um, um, say that that hypothesis uh, uh, was correct. It's unresolved, and so we're really left with spontaneous. No combustion, spontaneous ignition. Right, uh, now, you've uh, heard the story. Uh, we, Stuart and I, produced quite a, uh, a lengthy uh, a report for the uh, for the people in the nursing home about what they uh, what they should do to improve the things. But on the face of it, it was a well-run um, organisation, modern, clean. There were a lot of failures. What did you people see? That panel thing you're talking about? The, yeah. The, and the crap that they put into the washing right. home. Yeah. It actually says in the uh, in the huge manual, don't put mop heads in the uh, in the dryer. And yet there was right on the front, you know, mop heads high. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Switching off the power. Yep. Just don't switch off the power. Don't switch off the power. So as soon as uh, as soon as they uh, got a problem, this is an electrical appliance. We switch off the power. So you know, it's uh, you know they're applying common sense rather than the actual procedures. Yep. You gave us a clue from the operational side of it, but yes. they didn't sort of observe properly. Did they cause an evacuation upstairs, or was it? Uh, the, the smoke doors had, uh, had closed, and so it was confined to a couple of rooms, and they just uh, moved the patients out of there. So it was, yeah. Yeah. Yep. The thermistor, the, the SH error, the manual for the dryer says, if you get an SH, SH error, well, no, it doesn't. It says replace the thermistor. But it doesn't say, don't use it. Uh, then what they were going to do was replace the, the, the thermistor at the next uh, surface. It doesn't specifically say, do not use until you replace. But, uh, yeah? Yes, but it sounds like the thermistor wouldn't have made any difference. It sounds like the fire was already going in the front of it. But the thermistor was going to cut the power off the front of the burner off. That yeah. fire was probably going to get down. The thermistor allowed the temperature to get up if they didn't beyond the 82. The thermistor failure. It should have. It should have uh, said, "Okay, it's 82, uh, more than 82 degrees. We're going to turn the dryer off and uh, 
set the ball. Uh, would have to be a, a, over 104 for the thermostat then to turn the drawer. Some of the drivers were getting out there and um, ignited it a lot. Yeah, well, that's what we, we couldn't work <coughs> that one out, um, whether there was something in there to produce enough vapours, because there was 1,600 litres per minute of air coming, um, drawing the uh, vapours <coughs> out of that uh, out of that drum as well. Is that drum to reverse? I don't yeah, think so. Right? Because they're all the modern boats drives, so that's the whole reason why they, um, they do a cycle in one direction and then they reverse so that you don't get the I don't know that uh, that they uh, reversed. Yeah. It, uh, it's it's something to find out. It untangles them. Mm -hmm. You don't get hot spots that can be true. It's spontaneous. Just from the uh, look of what uh, was there, uh, I didn't see there any sort of evidence that it had reversed. No. And it may well have. Yep. Anything else? I think you've, you've covered uh, most of the things. They had a dry cam extinguisher. Uh, it was the only extinguisher in the laundry. So uh, I mean, it was an A-class fire, wasn't it? It wasn't an electrical fire. Um, and it obviously didn't uh, didn't work. Didn't put it out. So there's quite a few uh, things there. Um, we we thought that uh, all the laundry staff should be trained in fire extinguishers rather than have to go and uh, and get the maintenance supervisor as well. So if you are going to turn if you are going to fight the fire yourself and you turn the electricity off. You should be then using the water and extinguish it. Uh, the laundry bags, the procedure for filling the laundry bags, we felt needed to be examined as well. Uh, that, uh, okay, fair enough, you could wash the stuff, but uh, you really need to, to sort it after the washing stage. You're just picking it up and sticking it in the dryer seemed to be uh, ridiculous when you where you, you, know, you couldn't be sure that uh, flammable liquids weren't being put into the, uh, into the dryer. And if, you, if there were flammable liquids in there, then you shouldn't dry the whole thing at that time. Okay. And then um, when I was reading through the literature, Jim Everett uh, came up with uh, this, this bit about, uh, in America, we've had a number of fires where you put hot objects into polyethylene you know, drums and it catches on fire and uh, milk, milk and plastic goes all over the, uh, uh, the floor. So it's like a wheelie bit, uh, like a, putting the, uh, the hot stuff into a, into a wheelie bin, you know, a silo bin. Oh. So that's, that's what the actual bin was uh, like. Okay, so I think those are the ones. There are a couple of other things out. Uh, the shade cloth outside um, was uh, uh, really, I think, uh, could have been removed and they could have given the staff a bit of shade further out in the middle with a, a non flammable uh, uh, the roof. And you can see there that um, they actually had the laundry chute, the bottom of the laundry chute. Um, secure open. Um, they did have the uh, one of the, the top closed, but uh, the uh, smoke products could found its way up to almost the top of it. Okay, so that's uh, that's it. We